Wharton Sports Path. It was homecoming down at White Bear Lake as the Bears took on Woodbury in a rainy homecoming matchup. Then it's a Metro East showdown between the Tartan Titans and the Montevideo Zephyrs, both looking for the number one seed in Section 4, 5A. Finally, it's Section 4, 2A soccer. Don't go anywhere as we take you down the sports path. First goal of the game for White Bear Lake. They lead one. Welcome back to an all-new episode of Sports Path. Both John and I join you uh, after a few episodes of just one of us taking the lead on the show. And we are both back, and I don't know about you, John, I'm ready to talk Northeast Metro Prep Sports. Oh, yeah, our Fab Four teams, you know, they're heading in the playoffs. Our football teams are better than ever. You know, it's a, it's a great year to be a SEC broadcaster. Yeah, great time of year as always, but I can't believe we're already talking postseason play. Some of our sports have already moved into section tournaments. I know, it's only October, which is like what, you know, not even a tenth of the way through the school year, but we're already in the playoff football and also you know, we haven't done a Sports Path episode together in quite some time. Yeah, been about a month, but uh, happy to be here. I always feel like uh, I do a little bit better when I got you alongside of me, John, so glad you're here, glad I'm here as well, but as we mentioned, got a packed show, so we should probably get started. And as always, we want to start the show as we do, scouring your social media in search of the best tweets and whatnot out there. And so here is this week's social media montage. Okay, to start out, we take a look at the last Friday Night Lights. Big year for Minnesota high school football as the Vikings have opened up their new TCO Performance Center to a few high school football games. Uh, it was a big one this past Friday. None of our Fab Four schools were represented necessarily, but Lakeville North dominated Prior Lake in a 38-3 win. And uh, maybe in the next few years, one of our Fab Four schools could make their way down to the new stadium for a game. But gotta love that, love that field, and I love that idea that they are gonna play some high school games there. Really hope to get the Fab Four there. Yeah, super cool thing to do. You know, you play at the uh, U.S. Bank to end the year in the sections if you make state, but you know, just to play in a stadium like that early on, I mean, that's that's pretty sweet. Yeah, a little more fitting for a high school game than, than uh, I guess, U.S. Bank Stadium a little bit. Hey, tax dollars being put to good use. But next, we take a look at this past Sunday. Uh, we usually call it Super Sunday, also known as the Bob Jackson Championships. It's the White Bear Lake Youth Football Championships Sunday as each level of play had their own uh, championship game and of course we were there to cover it. Each game will be airing many times over the next week or two on SEC Community so you guys can check the schedule on sctv.org for exact playback times. As you can see it was really a snowy day out there. Probably not the usual for these youth football teams but I bet they had a lot of fun and I hope there are some snow angels in that snow on some touchdowns Sam. Oh, definitely had to know some of those players were tempted. Love that we do that here at SEC broadcast those games. If you ever need another guy to do play by play, don't be shy. Gotta love the snow there as well. All right, well, finally, let's take a look at a tweet from Matamidi Boys Soccer. Big news here is Helio de la Torres. Yes, Helio de la Torres gets selected for the 2018 Class A Mr. Soccer Award. He's a finalist. This award goes to the best senior voted on by the state high school coaches. One winner will be selected out of the five finalists at the state tournament banquet. Adela Torres scored 12 goals this season, tacking on six assists as well. And uh, for those of you following this Miami Mi soccer team the past few years, you know, Helio De La Torres has kind of led the way. So we'll wait till that banquet at the state tournament to uh, see who wins that award. And I believe that is all we have for this edition of the Social Media Montage. <laughs> All right, next, what do you say we get into some football? Big Metro East matchup. This one decides the Metro East. Who sits at the top? We got the Tartan Titans versus the Matamidi Zephyrs, as we teased on the lead-in. And Matamidi will eventually start a great run on their first drive. This one's 16 yards from Michael Hershey right up the gut. 
but Tartan will keep them Just off the Hershey scoreboard for that drive. And it wasn't until the second quarter, Tartan's Tim Owen Owen's gets the, the ball. He takes this He's one near the, the line right of scrimmage, but eventually breaks free down lane. the sideline. He uses lead. a block to get to it ten. on in the end zone. And that gives Tartan a 7 nothing lead over Montemidi at Montemidi. Now near the end of the first half, big old running back Eric Bjork. He's shifty. He moves up the ball up the middle for a big gain. He'll eventually get stopped here near the 25-yard line, near the 26. Now quarterback Arlinson will eventually keep the ball in a key third and one to put the Zephyrs at first and goal. Big question is, can they convert? Can they tie this game up? And I think this one's going to be answered on this next highlight right here. Eric Bjork's really been the go-to for this team all year. And he gets some a nice lane up the middle. It takes him for a touchdown. This one's all tied up at seven. Now a big turnover right here. This one coming in at the end of the half. Fumble. This one goes in favor for Matamidi. But they got some time to run some offensive plays with 9.4 seconds left on the clock in the first half. Now... As I said, a few more plays. First one's a pass for Arlinson. He underthrows it, and there's enough time for another. And this time he overthrows it. This one looking in the end zone, just throws it over the defenders. And now they'll get one final chance. Now one second to go. Arlinson leaves the pocket. Tartan players coming from all directions. He bombs this one out. Puts it up for Hadley. Hadley uses those basketball skills, but he gets knocked away. Too many Tartan players around. He can't come down with the ball. So we're going into the second half, all tied up at seven. Now to start the Wait, half, the Owen center. gets a Owen big run, making a play out of virtually nothing. He gets some good the yards side. there, eventually getting tackled down around the 45. Makes now key third down here for Tartan. Matamidi's Dean Tobridge goes unblocked. He bats that pass away for a great pass down. tip, and Tartan will eventually punt it away. Now Matamidi's ball, Arlinson takes it himself. And he'll pick up some good yards here, but he gets a big hit by Tartan. Plays whistle dead. Now needing two yards here to get up the first down. Eric Bjork powers it through. For just that, things end up getting a little chippy here between Tartan and Matamida. You know, this is quite the rivalry this year. These teams are vying for that Metro East crown. You got to love the fire between these two teams. Both teams will be penalized for this one. 3.43 left in the third quarter. You know, but Eric Bjork, he just can't run. He can Arlen receive, too. He catches a short pass pressure. right here on the Dumps screen. You know, gets some extra 30. yards near He'll the end of the third quarter as Matamidi is looking for another score. Now, they would score, but they would have to settle for three Kick points. Kyle Oswald hits a 30-yarder to put the Zephyrs up 10-7. to seven. Now, that's a pretty long kick for a high school player, so Oswald getting her done. Now, momentum shifts Berger fast. Harden receives, inning. and it's Dorian Singer. Harden Dorian Singer is a... You know, he's pretty dang fast, and he'll take this one 85 yards to the house, all the way to the end zone, push it off Matamida defenders. Tartan takes the lead 14 to 10. What a huge swing of momentum. Now going into the fourth quarter, six and a half minutes remaining, a low snap, and Tartan on for Tartan on the punt. They have to settle for trying to run the ball up the field. And obviously, it's no good there. Matamida gets first goal on the 19. Now after getting the one yard line, Arlinson powers it through the middle making it 17 to 14 with just over five minutes left in the game. So Tartan will have the ball again. Whalen passes it over to Meyer across the 50 yard line with time ticking. They got to get in the end zone, but there's plenty of time left. Now it's first and 10. Whalen, you know, he'll run a little boot out right. He'll bomb it deep to Anton Kimmins. Kimmins using his basketball skills, getting over the defender. He He's gets in. on into the know. end zone, but wait, there's a flag on the play. There is some laundry on the field. Illegal motion. This one's called back. Kim Touchdown doesn't count. Doesn't matter, ten. though. Tim Owen Ball gets the, the ball and follows his hold. blockers. Follows gets his on blockers. into the end zone with a minute 15 and left to go. Tartan takes a 21-17 to 17 lead over Matamidi with 115 left to go. And now Matamidi gets the ball back. Hershey Michael the Hershey carry. takes the ball. And this one comes fumble, loose. Tartan comes away with the fumble. You think that's Matamidi's last chance, or, but you know, they, they call it some timeouts. They get the ball back, so four seconds left. Matamidi looks to get a pass play going. And they're just gonna, they're gonna throw this one around. A little pitch back. Eventually they try to get it out to Hadley. 
Hadley doesn't have anyone to go to, and he just gets and forced out of, out of bounds by the Tartan, Tartan defender. Tartan break. takes this one, 21-17, to 17. 17. and according to our best research, that is Tartan's first win at Matamidi. They have won at home before against Matamidi, but never at the beautiful George Smith Field. One. Huge win for the Titans, possibly a Matamidi Tartan matchup later ahead in 4-5A, maybe even a, you know, a replay of the Snow Bowl last year, which I'm pretty sure... I got frostbite on my feet that game, Sam. Yeah, that was an intense game. That was a great game right there. Of course, both these teams, you said, are in the same section. They're in the same conference. We'll take a look at those conference standings. So the loss for Matamidi drops them to 3-1. Tartan right there at 3-1 and one after the inexplicable loss to Simley a couple weeks ago. Both teams at 5-2 and two overall. Talk about they're probably going to share the Suburban Great Conference title. Probably, most likely going to meet in that section final again uh, this year. So this rivalry is going to get stronger and stronger, and especially after a game like we just saw. Yeah, I'll never understand why high school doesn't do a tiebreaker. You know, nonetheless, we figured that out a couple of years ago. Very unfortunate as, you know, Tartan would, you know, win that crown. But uh, let's go to the Suburban Gold standings. It continues to be a struggle uh, for North St. Paul in the Suburban Gold. They actually lost to Cooper. I don't even know where that is. Last Friday to 54-6. to they are now 0-7 on the year and are looking for any sign of progress to end the year under coach, brand new coach Teagland. And you know, they're just, they gotta get something going into next year because this is not a good football team, Sam. Yeah, always tough in your first year of a program. I think PJ Fleck and a lot of other football coaches, good football coaches can tell us that. So looking forward to uh, how the Polars shape up next season if uh, this year wasn't so great. Well, moving on, we got some more football highlights to get to. This one's White Bear Lake homecoming, hosting Woodbury, both teams four and one. Both teams having a great season. But White Bear Lake not starting off great right there with the uh, miscue on the punt, and that's gonna lead to Woodbury picking up points on their first drive. This little sweep to the outside, not really touched and into the end zone. And after the extra point, it's going to be a 7-0 lead to the Royals. Bears get a good chance on the kick return, though. Bryce Peters goes up the middle all the way past the 50-yard line, where he'll eventually be stopped just a couple yards into the Woodbury zone. <clears throat> Nothing comes from it on that Bears drive and going the other way now. This is Brock Reinhardt for Woodbury. He'll make some moves, take it up that far sideline, and the big gainer for the Royals. They would not get into the end zone on that drive either, and we'll skip ahead late into the second quarter. White Bear trying to get on the board. Bryce Peters going after it again, getting himself all the way down to the one-yard line. Not quite into the end zone, but... On the next play, handoff to Boeing, and he'll go in for the White Bear Lake touchdown. That extra point will be good, and we're all tied up at seven going into the break. Now the kickoff here to start the second half, and this is not what you want to see if you're a Bears fan. Kramer for Woodbury is going to take it the distance. Where is the White Bear Lake special teams? Nobody within five yards of this guy can get a hand on him, and it's going to be a 14-7 Woodbury lead after that one. Now a little bit later on, another big play by the Woodbury special teams. This one on a punt return. Again, switching fields on the return and the big play leading to good field position for the Royals. They're gonna have to settle for a field goal after the big return. That'll extend the lead to 17 to seven after the nice 22 yarder. Now White Bear Lake just unable to get out of their own zone, even their own end zone on the ensuing uh, possession as the snap on the punt goes way over the punter's head for the safety. Woodbury will get the points and the ball 19 to seven now. There's Brock Reinhardt again reversing direction, just showing off some of the athleticism. White Bear just couldn't keep up with it all day long. That one goes into pay dirt. And after the extra point, it's 26 to seven. Now the Bears are gonna connect here on a big play. Oh my. Love that one-handed grab right there. Believe that was Kevin Boeing. He's going to carry it all the way in. What a catch. Looking like Odell Beckham. In fact, he's same, got the same number. White Bear's going to have to go for two right there. And they'll get it as Andrew Kleiss takes it up the middle to make it 26-15 late in the third. And White Bear wanting a miracle and perhaps getting it right here as Woodbury is going to cough up the football on that run. Tough to tell. Bear signaling it, signaling that they've got it. They do, and they'll get the ball, but a penalty and some big plays by Woodbury on defense means nothing for White Bear Lake. Next possession for the Royals. 
face and he can run it himself. And the blitz up coming up and getting out of Murray's the pressure is Charlie Wilson, the Woodbury the quarterback, first gets first a big play gain play. right there. And Wilson's going to cap again. off the drive and most likely the game with the two-yard score right there. So Woodbury putting a damper on the homecoming festivities as they'll take this one 33-15, picking up the big win between the two four-and-one schools on what uh, White Bear Lake was really hoping, a game that they could win and continue on their big winning streak. And uh, with that, I think we will take a look at the standings in the Metro East. Yeah, if you're not winning you know, a game for three years, it's really turning out to be a very good year uh, for White Bear Lake as they are currently four and three on the year, two and three in conference. Uh, last Friday, however, they did lose to Creighton, a very good Creighton team. White Bear was actually down 21 to nothing in the first uh, quarter, and then they almost rallied to come back in the fourth quarter, and they came up just a little short. They actually take on Moundsview in their last game of the year. So with football season coming to an end, let's take a look at soccer standings, Sam. Yeah, we are going to get into soccer. I mentioned some of our sports are already into postseason play. Football not being one of them, but soccer sure is. So we'll see how the uh, girls' soccer Metro East standings ended up. Matamidi, uh, their loss to Hill Murray, uh, their 2-0 loss to Hill Murray means that they will finish second in the Metro East. And that loss a couple weeks ago is the only loss, though, to a 1A school for the Zephyrs, who are trying to repeat as Class 1A state champs. That loss also means that Hill Murray will most likely get the number one seed in Section 4A, and these two teams can meet up again in what could be a great section championship matchup. And that's a game I'd like to see. Now let's go over to the Suburban East standings. Uh, the Bears finished the year 5-2-1 in the Suburban East, and a very good 10-4-1 uh, overall record. Kayla Anderson's 20 goals and 12 assists led the way for the Bears, while junior Ella Janicki did her part for the Bears in the net, getting a lot of great saves. You know, this Bears program has done a great job in recent years, uh, you know, being really competitive in what is one of the toughest conferences uh, in the state and, you know, in any sport, really, Sam. Absolutely. Well, that's how standings ended up in the regular season. Let's take a look at some of the section tournaments as section play has already gotten started. Matamina mean, got the two seed. Hill Murray did get the one seed after that regular season victory over the Zephyrs. Now, both teams win big in their first matchup and will be the host of their semifinal tomorrow night. You see there, Matamini taking on St. Agnes. Yeah, so let's look at the 4-2A bracket. North St. Paul beats Tartan to get into the quarterfinals, but the Polars, they do lose to Eastridge in the quarterfinal round. Uh, White Bear Lake took on St. Paul Central in the quarterfinals, and we got the highlights. You know how we do it here at SEC Sports. So let's actually take you to the White Bear Lake Stadium on the South Campus. You know, our first cold game of the year, 29 degrees out, really strong win. Early on, the Minutemen beat the Bears down the field. Great defensive play, really helping out the goaltender with the block there. And then eventually, St. Paul Central gets a second chance at it. They set it wide of the net, still scoreless, 0-0. And now St. Paul Central continues the pressure. They manage to get a high shot on the net. And Janicki comes up with the nice jumping save. Her first tough save of the match, keeping this game scoreless. And the Bears had their fair share of chances as well. Here's a tough one. Put on a shallow angle. Goaltender's actually able to make the save there, so this game still remains scoreless. Now St. Paul Central really seemed to dominate play through the first half. They did everything right but put the ball in the net. Ball goes through, spinning toward a St. Paul player. Janicki rushes toward it. Gets past her, but it finds the leg of another Minuteman. Weird spin on it. Ball goes kicked off the upright. And Janicki with the lucky one there. Now the Bears get another chance immediately following. Long kick in toward the net. Sophie Freed for the Minuteman. Gets up and hits the ball skyward. Ball deflects off the goal post before being cleared out by a St. Paul player. Bears really close to netting a goal on that one. Still a scoreless match, a scoreless match so far. Now the Bears with another chance. Pass ahead to Anderson. She sidesteps the player, puts a left-footed shot in on the net. High above Sophie Free, the ball sails it in to put the Bears one to nothing near the end of the first half. Now Janicki, the goaltender, looks really good to end the half, and she'll end up, you know, winning a race on an odd man rush. She's first to the ball as two forwards were looking to tie the game. Still one to nothing Bears. Uh, as we go into the end of the first half. So how do the Bears do in the second half? It started out strong for the Bears. Five minutes in, Anderson passes ahead. This one goes to Townley. Townley gets the easy goal all alone up there. That's two to nothing Bears. Now 15 minutes go by before really anything happens and the Bears 
will eventually net their third goal of the game right here. Just kicking in the far side, and then it hits off the defender. Ball eventually goes in after a little pinball effect. Three to nothing now. White Bear Lake is over St. Paul Central. Now looking, uh, St. Paul Central is looking to come back. They'll shoot far across the goal. Uh, Janicki will try to lay out for this one. It just goes past her into the back corner of the net. St. Paul Central's on the board now, three to one. But that wouldn't be enough, however. The Minutemen fall to your White Bear Lake Bears with the score of three to one. It was really a close game. Seemed to be really well played by St. Paul Central early on, but they couldn't get the ball in the net. The Bears come away with three goals to one. Really hard fought win out in the quarter final, Sam. And so let's look at the, where the bracket sits now for two way. After White Bear Lake beat St. Paul Central, uh, the Bears would unfortunately lose to the next round to a very good Eastridge team. And it'll be Eastridge versus Stillwater squaring off in the final tomorrow night. So, you know, great season for the Polar, uh, for the White Bear Lake Bears. Absolutely. So that's how your section for two ways looking on the girls side. Now we'll switch over to boys soccer. First, take a look how the Metro East standings ended up. And our Fab Four is representing well in the Metro East as Montemini and North St. Paul share the conference title. Gavin Goralnik and of course our boy Helio De La Torres led the attack for the 1A Zephyrs who just like the girls are looking to do big things going into the postseason. Now North, now North, now North St. Paul will have to do it on the 2A side. The 13 win Polars will look to Ahmed Jallo to lead them in the playoffs after he scored 18 goals in the regular season. Yeah, so it makes Suburban East uh, standings real quick here as Wiper Lake finished with only two wins all year and only scoring two goals in their last seven games. So on a seven game losing streak, so not a very good team there. Let's hope they do better next year. They were pretty good last year, Sam. Yeah, quickly looking at Section 4A tournament. Montemita got that one seed, got past St. Paul Harding in their quarterfinal matchup and got some help from Hill Murray as Hill Murray knocked off two seed Mung Prep. Both teams will play their semifinal matchups tomorrow with uh, Montemita hosting St. Paul Washington. And if they win that one, they'll host the final. Yeah, so surprisingly in the Section 4 2A, White Bear Lake nearly beat the top seed. Stillwater losing one nothing in the quarterfinals. North St. Paul beat Hastings 2-1. They ended up losing to Eastridge 3 to nothing. Eastridge will take on Stillwater in the final. The Podies are one of the favorites to win the state title this year, Sam. All right, so we had to get through that a little bit quickly because we wanted to get to our next segment that we uh, brought you our first edition a couple episodes ago. And this is a new segment that is called Out and About with Mike Peden. This past week, Mike Peden was out and about again. This time he was covering the North St. Paul volleyball team. He talked to a few players after a recent practice to see what has all happened to make their season so successful. And this again is Out and About with Mike Peden. The motivation to join North St. Paul Volleyball features a myriad of reasons. I came home with a flyer for North Juniors Volleyball and I told my parents, I said, hey, I want to try this out. My mom played volleyball when she was in college and that really pushed me to just keep coming back every season and I just love the sport and love playing it, making new friends every year. Ever since I was in fourth grade when I started the sport, I was never satisfied for where I was at. I would always watch the older girls or the better players and would always strive to be like them. Throw them all together, and the sum is a tradition of talent. 20 win seasons accumulate on a yearly basis. In fact, the Polars won their first 20 games of the 2018 season. Although Concordia Academy put a chill to North St. Paul's winning streak, their sense of accomplishment isn't hibernating. We are a team that we don't give up, and we are very competitive. We really want to win. There's many games where we could have just you know, I've been satisfied with winning 19, 18, but we always decided to push further and see as far as we can go because we know how talented we are, we know how hard we can push, and we knew that we could do it. So how do they do it? It starts with setting the scene. We have two setters on the team. Lauren's an amazing setter. She's also an amazing hitter, so it's good to, like, you know, we work together, help each other, make everybody look good. Next comes chemistry. There's plenty of it with the Polars, and their determination continues to grow. Last year was kind of a rebuilding year to some extent. We lost our coach, we lost a couple of starters, but I think that we've bounced back completely and we've brought a new energy and face to North Volleyball. And each face displays a different facet of willpower. No one shrugs off academic commitments, especially Yiza Franco. The daughter of an educator, Franco's name has appeared on every honor roll since junior high. I just want to be a good example, especially for younger girls in our program, about where they can be and how 
no matter how far you come, there's always room for improvement, especially in school. School is very important. Bria Sandifer is an embodiment of resilience. An assortment of ailments was no match for her spirit. I suffered a concussion, some injuries to my leg, and some like heart problems a little bit. I do love the sport, so I just kind of put it to the side and just kept pushing for the thing I love the most. Lauren Stenman's story is one of comprehension. A recent commit to Lewis University, volleyball has given Stedman a preparation in adversity. Even if you lose, like, you still need to be able to bounce back and come back even stronger um, and deal with things that you've never really dealt with before. No matter which angle serves them most, the volleyball team proudly embraces their role model status for females in the community. Volleyball has definitely boosted my self-confidence, not only as an athlete, but as a person. And it's shown me that as a female, I can be powerful and I can have great successes, not only the boys, but I can too as well. In North St. Paul, I'm Mike Beaton for SCC Sports. All right, well, thanks again for, uh, to Mike Peden for getting out and about. What a story there on, uh, not surprisingly, a very successful volleyball program. And I think we're going to take a look at some of the volleyball standings. Yeah, let's get right to it. First of all, let's get into the Metro East volleyball standings. Uh, the competition is a bunch of seals, and they're getting slaughtered by the North St. Paul Polars. The Polars are having a year to remember. 5-0 in conference, 22-2 overall. They did face some tough competition there in the regular season game against Stillwater. Not too sure if it was a tough nighter. Uh, you know what? I think Stillwater's just a heck of a team. But I really thought the Polars could best them. Unfortunately, they won. You know, they didn't win on three sets. It's like lose to Stillwater. But looking forward to some postseason play, Sam. And maybe another big rivalry showdown uh, in Section 4, 3A. Um, as Tartan and Montemidae didn't have the best years as they are down in the middle of the bottom of the standing. So let's move on to the Suburban East. Yeah, and in that Suburban East, uh, it was a bit of a tough year for White Bear Lake because they're having a rough go of it at 5-18 and 18 on the year and 0-6 and in the Suburban East at the bottom of the conference. Well, it's almost the end of the show, Sam, so you know what that means. Time for my Athletes of the Week. Oh, that's what I was going to guess. All right, for my male athlete of the week, I have to go with Tartan senior running back, number one, Tim Owen, and that win over Montemita, as we discussed earlier. We didn't give you the stats, but he had 23 rushes, 170 yards, and two touchdowns as Tartan came up with their huge win against Montemita. And as far as our research showed, as we said earlier, it's their first win playing at George Smith Field against Montemita. Obviously, Tartan has won a few home games against Montemita, but never an away game. So congrats to Tim Owen in leading that team to a huge W in that rivalry, and good luck moving forward. Uh, toward the end of the year towards section play. Now let's get to my female athlete of the week. And you know, this one was really hard to choose, so that's why I'm giving it to the whole North St. Paul volleyball team as Mike Peden just highlighted. This team wrapping up their great season with some utter dominance they displayed all year. I have no choice but to give it to them. They've only lost two games this season and they face off against Hastings tomorrow night to end the year. But if they can win there, this season will go down in history, only losing two games. The whole season is probably a North St. Paul record. And, you know, I mean, we don't really know for sure, but it's got to be good luck as the Polars continue section play here soon. And we hope to be covering Section 4 3A finals at St. Paul, against St. At St. Paul, Washington. So good luck to all you Fab Four teams as you guys head into the playoff season. And that's it for my Athletes of the Week. Well, great job as always, John. I love your choices for Athletes of the Week. Thanks. You know, I really, you know, Tim Owen was the easy one. I, he might have been one of my first few Athletes of the Week of the year, but I mean, when you put on a running clinic like he did, I had to pick him. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, how can you go wrong with that North St. Paul volleyball team? Obviously, we saw a little package there by our buddy Mike Peden, and uh, they're doing good things. Oh, yeah. Big, you know, it's going to be exciting to watch them play. They're a heck of a team. As you talked about earlier, the size, they're kind of a shorter team, so size might get them in the end, as Stillwater is a huge team. That's right, but hey, doing a lot of good things. We're really pushing for them in that Section 4, 3A section tournament. Hope this year can be the year they make it to the state tournament. Got a great coaching staff over there. So uh, not surprised to see them doing well, and I think that's just about it for us. Why don't you throw us out? Oh, I missed. Shot on. Score! First goal of the game for White Bear Lake. They lead one to nothing. Ball for the carry. He's got some space on the right side. He's got a lane. One man to beat. To the 10. He's in. Touchdown, Tartan. Young 
sideline, but Singer, he stays in bounds. One man to beat. He's at the 25. He's still going. The 10 stays on his feet. Touchdown! Touchdown, Tartan!